Now we are ready to start. Today, my guest is Nikki Perry, who's had huge success in New York with her cafe Tea and Sympathy, which serves traditional British food. Nikki, let's go back for a minute. What was your first job? It was at the London Stock Exchange when I was fourteen. I was employed as a tea lady. I would go down to the kitchen in the morning with the old ladies and get the trolleys ready with all the cups and saucers, milk, tea, sugar, and biscuits. I would go to each floor, pushing the trolley round, pouring the tea. By the time I cleaned the cups, it was time to do it all over again. Serving tea to stock exchange workers was hard work, but better than being at school. But my parents, who were both self-educated, encouraged me to go to college and do exams. So that's what you did. Yes, and after college, I worked in bars, clubs, and cafes. I dreamt of living in America and moved to New York when I was twenty-one. I got my first job in a coffee shop in the financial district, but it wasn't easy. The other staff got very frustrated with me. I didn't understand diner language such as "sunny side up" for eggs. <laughs> I had to learn to stand up for myself. After I'd been there for a year, I knew that what I wanted to do was start my own British cafe. But it wasn't until ten years later, when I had a green card allowing me to work permanently in the U.S., that I did it. So how did it happen? How did you come to start your own cafe? It came about after I had an accident on my bicycle and hurt my knee. When I tried to wait on tables again, my knee gave way. I knew then it was time to start my own business. The man who supplied the vegetables to the restaurant where I was working told me about a site in Greenwich Village that was available. I had often walked past that restaurant at night and peered in the window. It was ugly, with lots of grandfather clocks, but I knew my cafe would work there. How did you finance it? My father lent me ten thousand pounds to start the business, and I found a partner to contribute the same amount. I didn't see eye to eye with my partner, however, and、uh, after a long period of quarrelling, I borrowed a lump sum of twenty thousand dollars, and bought him out in the third year. I had to pay back forty thousand dollars in total, and didn't make any money for the first four years. Things didn't always go smoothly, did they? Oh, one of my problems. Was that the stove at the cafe would often pack up because of the weight of the cooking pots? They contained huge quantities of mince and mashed potatoes for shepherd's pie. So I started living on the same block as the cafe, and I would carry the food to my apartment and cook it there because I couldn't afford to buy another oven. But it's all very successful now, isn't it? <laughs> yes. The turning point was a review of the cafe in the New York Times. I had written to the food editor, telling him about the cafe. I got a call a few weeks later saying, "We've been to your cafe. We are reviewing it, so look out." I was very nervous, but the review was fantastic. And it's a very popular place that attracts celebrities, I believe. Yes, but I make them wait, just like everyone else. It is not unusual to see a queue outside, even in the snow. The cafe became so popular that I introduced rules a few years ago. They are taped to the door and request that patrons be pleasant to waitresses, and state that there is a minimum charge of eight dollars fifty per person. The rules also advise visitors from out of town to tip. Well, I hope your success continues. <laughs> Thanks for talking to me. Pleasure. That is the end of the task.